other minority um, or multi-ethnic groups, as I like to say. So tell us a bit about, you know, the work that you're doing then for any males that are listening in, you know, how they can maybe access you guys. Telling this story, um, the, the name of the group is is called the... Oliver to uh, my YouTube channel. I'm so pleased to have you here. Um, do you want to introduce yourself to uh, my followers? And uh, thank you as well for having me here today, Sabrina. Um, my name is Oliver Soriano. Um, currently working at South London and Mosley NHS Trust as yeah. the uh, Associate Chief Nurse Officer. About how you got to this position, because I was just reading all the amazing stuff that you've done. So you're being very modest, aren't you? You're not just the um, Associate Chief Nurse, but you're also the President of the Philippine Nursing Association. You're also an expert representative on the um, RCN for mental health. And I saw that you're a board member as well. Is it Philippines Unite um, Charity as well? Yeah, so oh, just really exciting. So just tell us a bit about how you came to these fantastic roles. It's, well, thank you for, I think you've done a very good research about what I've been doing. As if like, I've, I do have a lot of time, but technically I just want to say that it's, it came from my advocacy of um, supporting Filipino community during the pandemic. Um, but I'll, let me just start first about my current role in the trust as Associate Chief Nurse Officer. So I've come in the Philippines, I left the Philippines in 1998 and started working here in the UK and got the opportunity to actually work in different fields, health areas from inpatient to community to a say, you know, with the support of colleagues with my uh, supervisors and your sponsors managed to actually go up the ladder um, applying to the post and proving myself to kind of like do all these things and study a lot um i think what what helped uh what i'm gonna say what helped is that like uh believing in my capability often mm -hmm. i always think that like oh i might not be the right person to that but i think the more that you have colleagues who are believing in your capacity, they'll be the one to kind of like encourage you and motivate you to go to those posts. So after I would say 15 years, managed to actually step up in going to the post of um, being a matron in older adults and then going to uh, a general manager position and then became a head of nursing until a year ago managed to actually apply for this post as associate chief nurse officer in the trust which my portfolio is mostly about physical health something that i'm very very passionate for our mental health um service users to ensure that like they equally receive a care for their physical health needs as well um but i'm quite amazed that you managed to actually find more information about myself um, I am currently the president of the Philippine Nurses Association UK. Ask in 2020, and this is the time during the height of the pandemic when a lot of Filipino healthcare workers, not only nurses, but also porters, nursing associates, suddenly died because of the pandemic. And that's when the Philippine Nurses Association UK was reinvigorated uh, during that time. And they thought, you know, like Oliver, and the, 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 the group, when we started, believed in my capability. And until now, they've asked me to actually keep it. Uh, it's a post where uh, we do our voluntary work. We are not being paid in doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's the advocacy of supporting our uh, Filipino community. Um, you also highlighted that there's another charity organization called Filipino Unite. Yeah. Uh, Filipino Unite is a, um, it's an umbrella um, charity organization where they don't only um, look into supporting nurses or healthcare workers, but also the wider Filipino community. So currently I'm a board member in there giving advice on how we can support the wider Filipino community, the family that uh, supports the nurses uh, in, in the country. It's a very active organization. I have a lot of like helplines uh, to support grant workers here in the UK. And also we link up in the Philippines to identify what kind of support we can give to Filipino colleagues thinking of coming into the UK. So we give those kind of advices. And the last one you mentioned is a, a little bit, 
aligned to the work that I'm doing uh, as yeah. an expert um, representative for the Royal College of Nursing, uh, specifically in older adults. I'm very, very passionate. That's one of my um, mm -hmm. in the care of older adults. So I was approaching colleagues to say that I think this was last year when they mentioned that they wanted to develop a group with regards to mental health in older adults. So I was invited to join them to kind of uh, provide guidance and in the care of older adults. At the same time, it's a sharing of information on how we can best uh, improve the care of older adults with mental health diagnosis. So a lot of things happening, but yeah. like something that I'm so passionate about. It's amazing because I, I remember first hearing your story remember when we were head of nursing um how many years ago together and just the amount of stuff that you did in the philippines because you trained in the philippines didn't you on us and then moved over to the uk you want to come to the uk and what was that transition like i think that's a very good question because often during the 90s philippine nurses normally go to states or the middle east or australia it was not until 1996 tentative came to the Philippines to recruit for Filipino nurses. I didn't have any intention of leaving the country, but so happened that my, my sister and my nieces was already living here in the UK. So I could lie in the States or Middle East or Australia, but because my nieces and my sister were here in the UK, I think I was just waiting for the UK to come to the Philippines. So the main meant for me to actually work um, abroad. And uh, it took two years for me to, um, for us to actually come to the UK because there were yeah. some challenges of uh, the documentation and the papers that we've got to bring 27 Filipino nurses as this, I think we became like a guinea pig <laughs> to test by at that time, the UKCC whether this, this 27 individual nurses pass the standards of the UK, UK nursing um, practice. The transition um, was slightly different as of what is happening now. Um, mm -hmm. Because we were the first group of Filipino nurses that came here, there was a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of like interviews. There's a lot of presentation that we have to go through. Before coming to the UK, I was already like practicing my nursing profession. I was already mm -hmm. teaching into yeah. universities, um, done my master's and everything. But that coming in here, you were seen as new nurse. You were not, you, you know, like they, it wasn't acknowledged the, the, the previous experience that, that we've got because of the belief of like our standard is almost like an American standard. Mm -hmm. um, so the transition coming to the UK in a way was very, very different because you have to go to this, what, what they call the, the six months adaptation period where you have to actually train, you have to do the courses, you have to do the uh, the test and examination and interview again. But to be honest, what, what helped during that time is like you've got this um, individual supervisors who mm -hmm. have guided you along the way and support you to actually get your registration. It's like 24 years ago now. And after 29 years, is but worked in the NHS for 23 of those 20 nine years and not only that because when you came over did you go into general nursing how did you get into mental health <laughs> oh i love that question everyone's <laughs> there because like mental health in the philippines is something that like not everyone i, I think it's the same here people will say oh you're working in mental health that must be a very challenging area i think when when i was in the philippines mental health was already the the focus of my um area so mm -hmm. when i was teaching in a university i was already what we call a clinical instructor um in which i've got like around 10 to 12 students that i have to take to uh, uh, one of our um, organizations that what we call the national center for mental health mm -hmm. so i was already um interested i was already practicing mental health when that opportunity came to come to the uk i was surprised and excited to see that like part of the um, available uh, position was in mental health. Mm -hmm. So when we came here, this is a very good story actually. Oh, in right. here, there were 27 of us and five of us was actually recruited to do mental health nursing. 
And I think at that time, Trak was actually work in an older adult's ward. Mm -hmm. The first month of our induction, you are required to do a lot of like training, presentation and everything. And probably the usual me, because I've got my background of teaching in, in a university, yeah. two universities in the Philippines. I, I was confident, I, I might say that I was confident in delivering, you know, like presentations. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that adaptation, one of the heads, I forgot his name now, I think it's his name is Colin. He came and spoke to me and said to me that like, oh, Oliver, are you okay if we will actually move you to an acute adult mental health nurses? And I felt that like, have I done something wrong? Because like I wanted to go to the older adults. It's like, yeah. well, probably because like I just talk too much. That's why they want to actually go to the acute. My other four colleagues who were, who mm -hmm. was I meant to be doing the older adults. And it's like, look, you know, if the opportunity is there, why not? And then mm -hmm. let's try. So I soon straight away started my mental health career in the UK in the acute adult setting rather than the older adult setting, yeah. which I was excited to actually go to. So the four colleagues started, like work was working in the older adults and I was an acute adult. And every time that I see them kind of like, I'm on my own here. So like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but like, I hope this is the right decision that offered me. But lo and behold, to be honest, I've learned so much mm -hmm. in those period of times, very different practice of what we do in the Philippines. So I've learned so much during that, I will say the first two years um, working in an acute adult setting. Sounds fantastic. It was like the right decision that you made to get to where, where you are now. Because I know, again, I remember your story. Did you help to open what was one of the, at the time, like crisis or home treatment team? It has helped me to kind of like have that experience, that knowledge, confident in delivering different forms of mental health support so yeah. soon after i was able to actually uh progress into my career in working in the community and uh, i have to say one of the best 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 experience i've got is kind of like working in in um, uh, one of the liaison services in mm -hmm. in king after working team so from adults, I was able yeah. to actually work in older adults. And at the time, there was one older adults um, crisis home treatment team already. And the plan was to kind of like develop something in the Croydon site. And um, I was able to kind of like help in the development and the delivery of this crisis home treatment team in older adults in Croydon. So something that I was very, very passionate about because often, um, that crisis point is the most important point that we can actually deliver the care, the intervention, the help and support to our patient group because that's the start of when you'll be able to help them to recover. I think that's 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 how I see it. Good, <clears throat> good, great. And fast forward that because as you you then mentioned, you know, you did other roles such as matron, general manager, head of nursing, and now this fantastic aid on role. And we'll talk about where you might be going to next has there been what what would what would you say are some of the highlights but some of the challenges and how you overcame those i think uh, i'll start with the highlights and the highlights for me coming from the philippine on my career learned that like it's not only medication that will help that person to yeah. to recover because in 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 the philippines the the, the challenge or the difference is that like mental health is still seen as kind of like a, a taboo illness like no one talks about it and the only way to actually treat them is to kind of like bring them to the hospital and that's it you don't see them anymore and most mm -hmm. of the treatment will be mostly about medication like here is that like um, nurses are empowered to do a lot rather than mm -hmm. just giving medication a lot of like training about therapeutic intervention to actually do training in solution focused brief therapy mm -hmm. manage to actually like you know learn from your colleagues the psychologists about cognitive behavior therapy so there was a, that you can support someone with mental health um, challenges and i think that's that's one of the highlight but like my biggest highlight is that coming to the uk is that you work with so many different fantastic talented nurses mm -hmm. and some are coming from different parts of the world as well 
So I think it's it's learning from those individuals and learning from your colleagues about developing yourself. And I think working as a team, I always believe mm -hmm. that like working as a team is one, you know, challenge, uh, one, one kind of like ways of um, uh, resolving the challenges that you've got. My challenges, I think it's it's the day-to-day -day challenges that you kind of like work with your page, always there, but it's just a matter of like, how do you resolve that? How do you actually deal with that? My challenges, I think this is a, a funny story. It's kind of like, um, when, when I first came into the country and when I was working, I think three years when, from the time that I started, I work at um, the, the liaison service at King's and at that time, there's not a lot of like Filipino nurses. Mm -hmm. um, there are very little of us who were, I think, uh, working. In I think my challenges are like because Phil at that time the the British community didn't know much about the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So whenever I actually like go and see someone, they was like, oh, I don't want to be seen by a Chinese guy, or they will ask me, so like Oliver is your name. So what is your real name? So I, I always kind of like say like, because I know very well that like there are some countries, for example, in Thailand, they've got mm -hmm. a very long name. They, 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 they were given also uh, an English name. Mm -hmm. But I think when, when those times came, I, I, I took that opportunity to educate someone that in Philippines, it's like this. So when someone says to me, I don't want to be seen by a Chinese person, I said like, no, I'm, a, I'm from the Philippines. And then they was just like, what's Philippines? So I think <laughs> it, it, it gives an yeah. opportunity to change the conversation of like when yeah. someone is very agitated, you, you allow a new form of di dialogue to kind of like speak about something different. And, and when someone actually says like, oh, you must have a different name. Next, to like no, this is my name, and yeah. and I always I'm I, I'm always I I will say I'm proud of like uh, how my mom actually gave this name to me because like she is very passionate about English literature, yeah. and that's why I've got the name Oliver. <laughs> um, so I always say that like look no that's my real name. Um, I, I will say that like during that early stage of not so many Filipino workers or healthcare workers were actually in the NHS. Not a lot of people know about the Philippines. And mm -hmm. those are just the times that like I was able to just tell them that like, look, Philippines is another country that you have to visit. And this yeah. is Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you're able to do that. Because um, I guess being from not a white British background, we do come across that whether you know you you call it an ism or but it's like you say that opportunity to educate people and change the conversation and, and leave that person with a different view because they might never have met another filipino in their life after that you know so Excellent. yeah <laughs> and, and i think what, one one of the things that i've um, I was always interested in is learning other people's culture and that's the good mm -hmm. thing that that working in in UK, specifically in London, where you work with different nationalities, you learn different cultures, you yeah. eat fantastic food that you've not tasted before. And you know, like yeah. you then realize that there's so many things that you can learn along the way. And until now, I always say, like, oh, never knew that. You still have to learn something, which is fantastic. But one thing I just forgot to mention yeah, it's like one of the things that i'm so so proud when i was um starting in my six months adaptation um that the one person who supported me during that time within me was actually from ghana and i'm, I'm kind of like always i always say this story that like with him i was able to kind of like feel proud that i can do the job that i can actually do because he was able to say like no oliver you have to actually do it this way it's like oh okay so i think with his guidance, um, his name is Coffee. I can mm -hmm. remember his name always. His name is Coffee, and and I always kind of like, you know, was so proud on how he helped me uh, during those times. And that's the thing uh, with me until now that like, if there will be any celebration from from my Nigerian friends or from my Caribbean, you know, colleagues, yeah. I always take the opportunity to join that 
not yeah. only because of the delicious food, but also like the atmosphere that, you know, like the celebration that people have actually do. So um, I always take that opportunity because um, that's another way for me to kind of like grow and more, grow more and like um, know more on like, what are the things that other people do? So it's exciting, I have to say, yeah. until now. <laughs> Every time, like if you, if there's any kind of like celebration that you have to actually do, count me in. <laughs> will do, will do. A lot of these, your colleagues have taken you in as family. I've seen you at weddings and different celebrations. Fantastic moving to London, and like you said, the it's the food. My favorite now is kind of like well, hate to say it, but like yeah. every time people will know that like my favorite is oxtails with green uh, rice, rice and peas, and it's like yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I tried to cook it one day, but like I said, like, mm, no, it's not original. I have to go yeah. to the places that makes it. <laughs> Back on, like you say, along the way, and what I've found interesting in your stories and everything I've read about you, and that whole bit about teamwork and the support is not only have you been supported along the way, but you also do that for other people. What important is that to you? And what tips can you give to people listening about how you can find those? Support? Of my role believes that, like, um, while you, go, I, I, I've heard it to, from someone that like while you go up onto your ladder, bring people up with you as well because that's how you can actually truly embed that like leadership to to make sure that like once you live this journey, there will be people doing it with a sense that like it will be in good hands. Yeah. And currently in my role in uh, in the Philippine Nurses Association UK, what we found out is that like. I think this is like uh, some stats that I have to share. So oh. there are around 42,000 Filipino nurses um, registered under the NMC. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are, I will say, only 10 people, not percent, 10 people who will be on the 8D, 8C, Band 9 VSM post. That's the, it's a, a very yeah it's a stark number that like we always i i kind of like started thinking this this colleagues of mine this filipino nurses who came from the philippines are well experienced mm -hmm. but there are some factors that i always think either they're settled in and they don't want to actually progress um so we do is kind of like offer it to anyone who says like look if you're applying for a higher post you're in the next stage of your company, more than going to coach you and, you know, give you the experience that like you can actually put to me because I think I always like sometimes an individual, not only Filipinos, but anyone feels that like, oh, let me just try it and not getting coaches along the way. And then once they fail, they feel that like that's the, the end of it, that they will not actually want to uh, progress further. For me, I always fail, but like mm -hmm. find a way that you can actually improve it. Find a way where you can actually be supported or be coached. Mm -hmm. Because in the trust, in, in South London, most NHS trust, I, I continue doing that. And how I do that is like every time that I go around, visit people, visit, they say kind of like, I'll be very interested to actually ask someone. So like, I always say like, aside from introducing ourselves, I will always say like, oh, what band are you now? And then my second question will be, how long have you been doing it? And sometimes you'll find that like they've been doing it for like five years, 10 years. I always say it's kind of like, what's the next stage? Yeah. Kind of like, are you not interested to actually go to the next level? Some people will actually say like, no, I'm happy now. Or because of family responsibility, I'm happy where I am. But some people will actually say that like, oh, well, I tried to actually apply, but like, I didn't get the chance to even be shortlisted. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's kind of like, well, has anyone looked in, into, into your personal statement? Has anyone supported you viewing what you're writing in your forms? And I think that's where I normally kind of like get into kind of like, look, give me a call, send me an email, mm -hmm. send me your document, let me review it, I'll support you. Regardless whether they're band five or band four wanting to be a nurse or yeah. a band seven wanting to go for a band eight A. Because along the way, the challenge that we always have is that like we always believe, well, I, I believe it at some point that like I may not be good enough. But mm. I always I've learned along this journey that like 
if you won't try it, you will not know. Yeah. But like in trying it, I always believe that like, look for people who might be able to help you. And currently, like manage to coach, manage to provide those mock interviews, actually be supported along the way, but at the same time as well. And that's the good thing about this coaching, that like you learn so much from the people that you will actually be talking. It's one of the pleasures doing this coaching, well, mentoring way of support. I I totally understand what you mean, because I always say to people, that gives me joy. And that's my way of giving back because somebody did that for me. I'm going to nick your questions, actually, like the bit about um, your band, where you, where you want to be, because I guess it's, that, it's those conversations. And it's great for those colleagues who feel OK to be where they are. That's all right. There's still support we can do to make them feel happy and, and show that they're leaders and can give back. But for those people that have either had a knockback, that that little bit of just looking over and having that conversation does go such a a long way. You are part of the male leaders for the NHS as well, because the other thing in in having you here, which is so refreshing, we don't see a lot of male nurses, especially in mental health, especially in those higher bandings, especially from other minority um, or multi-ethnic groups, as I like to say. So tell us a bit about, you know, the work that you're doing then for any males that are listening in, you know, how they can maybe access you guys as well. Thank you for telling this story. Um, the, the name of the group is, is called the Jabali Network. Jabali, wow. Jabali Network is a Swahili word meaning strong rock good foundation what has happened is three and a half ago there was yeah. an opportunity for 11 quite senior male nurses who spoke to our current chief nurse officer uh dame ruth may mm-hmm. to say that like we want to create this group because as what you correctly highlighted there's not a lot of like um male representing the bame community in the higher position in the NHS. So I got involved with that during COVID because I started talking about the Filipinos kind of journey and the impact of COVID. I'm currently being answered by her chief nurse officer, Vanessa Smith. And she was the one who told me that like, Oliver, there is this group who are forming for senior nurses. And I think it will be good for you to kind of like be part of it and, you know, have your story be heard and the impact of COVID to Filipino community. Mm -hmm. So lo and behold, I was invited. And I have to say, those 11 senior male nurses embraced me in a way that like they guided me, they supported me. So fast forward a year and a half later, uh, the Jabali network has now grown in big numbers of members from you know like some ceo some uh, chief operating officers from directors of different um departments to of nursing we have now cultivated a brotherhood if i may call it of senior male nurses with the aim of um to encourage more individuals in the community to do nursing um like male individuals mm-hmm. to do nursing that you know nursing for males are like it ha- it happens and you can progress in your career and the second advocacy that the um, network is doing is to identify those male nurses currently working in the nhs to kind of like have a voice and see us as a role model that like they can go up the ladder mm-hmm. and progress in their career One of the ways that we're doing this is by, you know, having a a a mentee that Mm -hmm. we invite to attend some of our uh, meetings so that they will see and they will find that, like, that's a leader with the same color as me. Mm -hmm. And the aim is, like, we always say, if I can do it, you can actually do it. So to... To your viewers who who listens, you know, don't stop off, you know, um, getting into position like, oh, I'm, this is good enough. No, it will get better. 
and and yeah. the way that it's making it better is like there are networks of professional individual who can help you succeed in those careers so watch this space because oh, yeah. our website account has not opened up yet but um soon after hopefully i'll be able to share it to you sabrina and yeah so it's it's an exciting um network that supports um male nurses in 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 the healthcare setting so again let me just emphasize it's not just in in the nhs because some yeah. of the colleagues that we have do work in primary care networks mm -hmm. some of them work in social and health health and social care networks so it's for anyone that's really good to know and as soon as i get those details i will put them in the description or share them on social media there's something about um our black nurses re recognizing their own inner strength we um, inspire the next generation you know and leave it better so you're currently the associate director of nursing when you took this role on i'm sure you had a vision of where you wanted to to go and i know you are potentially on that that route so where do you see yourself in five years time and do tell us what your next role is going to be oh this is like uh how do you call it uh career reveal yeah. <laughs> before i can reveal where i'm going next yes yeah. uh again uh i always i just want to emphasize that uh find a sponsor find someone um that believes in in your capability it doesn't have to be just one person you can actually have as many sponsors as you want either internally in your trust or you can find someone in the national level or from the other trust because that's the only way that you can uh, find that person who will guide you uh, with the skill set that you've got so two years ago i was able to go to the aspiring director of nursing um, master class courses it was a one-year course where i was able to kind of like network with other colleagues who were aspiring to be on that role um, soon after finishing that, I think I only had three months space. And what happened is that like, I was able to actually apply to another co um, course by the NHS. It's called the Getting to Equity program, where you have to actually ask your sponsor to sponsor you to go to this course. Uh, as I said, like my sponsor, um, current Chief Nurse Officer Vanessa Smith, was the one who um, uh, encouraged me to attend that. So the two of us was actually going to this course yeah. to kind of like what are the roles of your sponsor and what is what are what are the things that the sponsory have to look into. So um, that's another uh, four months training. Um, it's quite it's it's quite revealing because there's a lot of like sponsors that you'll meet that like will will then identify different skill sets and it's helpful to know like what what's available out there mm -hmm. um following that i think this is my career reveal uh, because your question that's those are the questions that we were asked on those two courses yeah. where will you be on the next um two years or five years um for me i think i will say i never always kind of like i don't know what i'll be in the next two years because yeah. all i just wanted to kind of like do is like do the job that i'm enjoying but this course actually gives you you know a visualization of where you want to be in the mm -hmm. future and when i did those two courses it's just like within a year or two i wanted to become a director of nursing um, because that sets the goal. And okay. I just then realized that like, there's no harm putting a timeline. I think having that goal gives you, you know, the courage to work more for that goal and aim for it. Okay. So um, happy to actually share to, to you, Sabrina, and to our viewers here that like, after all those um, period of courses and support that I've received, I will now be leaving the trust, uh, the South London and Mulsey NHS Aww. Trust. And <laughs> I've, I've been offered a post um, as the director of nursing in Lancashire and South Cumbria NHS <laughs> Trust. Something that I'm very, very um, happy about and humbly to kind of like say that like, with, with I think believing in myself, mm -hmm. um, 
and knowing the people who can actually help and support you to go to that level helps a lot and that's what i want to actually share to your um viewers that you know find that person and that person might be me so mm -hmm. what i'm saying kind of like if there is an opportunity that like you're listening to to this um uh interview you know um do get in touch because i'm more than happy to kind of like provide that time to you know just have a pep talk of what are the things that you can actually do uh or who are the people who can actually help you so so yes quite a long answer to a very short no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and i'm glad you answered it in that way because you're right there's no there's no point in saying I want to be X without saying by when, because like you say, if you aim for nothing, you will meet it every time because you'll you'll never get there. But even if you by X date, you don't get it by when you look back and see the things that you've done to get to that position, it's still something to celebrate. So I am so pleased for you. I think you're going to be an excellent, excellent director of nursing and definitely will be such an inspiration to, you know, not only your Filipino nurses, but other black male nurses um, from whichever multi-ethnic um, background they're from to see that you can do it. And, you know, you're doing it with a smile and helping others. And as you say, lift as you, you rise. So I'm really, really pleased um, to hear that. And just to end off, is there any final thoughts you want to, to share? Um, my final thought is, A, just want yeah. to say massive, massive thank you of having this kind of platform. Because um, I always believe that uh, this time where we are now, social media is quite important on how we can get that information to share and i think your platform have already given a lot of information to support them so i'm just saying thank you so much so i'm hoping you know um people will get in touch um people will actually look for individuals who can support them um it's it you might I will say for the viewers, you might find that like there's some challenges along the way, but don't be discouraged because along the way, you'll find that person who will actually, you know, trust and be the person who will lift you up into that next career move. So but just thank you for this platform. And thank you so much for your time. And as I always say to people, we're going to be bold and brave together. I will put um, Oliver's details in the description so do get in contact follow him on twitter uh, he's doing amazing things so thank you so much oliver thank you